Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody had a lovely weekend. Um, just give me a second. I'm on just a few minutes early just to see if I can bring everything up and hopefully see comments this time, which would be nice. I didn't do anything yesterday but laundry. You know, the normal stuff, laundry, change my sheets, but pretty much I just relaxed all day because I pr was pretty tired. So today is part C. Hopefully everybody can see and hear me okay. For some reason the computer is just super slow today. There I am. Let's see. Just give it a second to come up. I don't know why it's so slow. I'm up, but I don't know if I'm going to see comments again today because it's being slow. I promise I will figure it out. If you do have any comments at all, um, post them, and as soon as the video is over, I will um, answer your questions. If you have any comments or questions or problems, I promise I will... Um, answer them as soon as the video is over and I will post it again as long as I don't have any issues on YouTube right away. So, so far we've done two parts and we're going to connect these two parts today plus do part C. So to connect them it's really really simple. We're just going to nest our seams so hopefully you can see that. Well we've got one seam going one way and one seam going the other and they make a perfect nest. I will pin them. Um, I don't do a lot of pinning, but when it comes to seams to make sure that they all line up where I want them to, I do tend to pin them. And, you know, everybody pins a little bit differently. Um, what I do is I will pin on one side of the seam come going down and come up on the other side of the seam just to make sure that they stay together. And this is just a quarter of an inch seam allowance just like we've been doing. Uh, I can see that somebody's watching but I don't know who. And I can't see comments. This is just annoying. So at least today you'll be able to see what it's going to start looking like, looking like together.
today's video isn't going to be too long because the next part, part C, isn't that big of a deal. So again, to remind you, okay, this is what we're doing, which is behind me. We just did this part and this part. We're going to be doing part C, which is the with the part where the pinwheel is at the bottom. And oh, it looks pretty good. I like my seams. Not bad. Not bad at all. And again, I highly recommend Best Press. You're just working with a lot of small pieces. It really does make a difference. It'll stop some of your pieces from going wonky. So there's the start of it. In today's lesson, you need two different blue fabrics. Um, a, the lavender fabric and the purple fabric. You will need a scissor, marking pen, and a small ruler. That's it. Pretty much that's all you're going to need for most of this. But, okay. Um, first part we're going to do is we're going to take our smaller squares and make a four patch. So I'm going to sew this one to this one, this one to this one, and then sew both of them together. So what are you guys working on besides this? Did anybody do anything good this weekend? You already know what I did, which is pretty much nothing. I am again going to chain stitch. I just find it's faster and easier. If you don't know chain stitching is just putting them together and not cutting the thread and just feeding the next part through so now with both of these we are I'm gonna iron my seams to the blue so if you keep the blue up on top and just set your seam whoops Sorry. Um, if you just leave the blue on top and then set the seam when you turn when you flip it, what I mean by that is if you leave the blue piece on top and set your seam by eyeing it real quick across the top, when you flip it, automatically the seam will go towards the blue. And when you're doing something like a four patch or a nine patch or something like that, um, if you do this to the same colored fabric throughout the process, your seams will automatically nest and they'll automatically go together really, really well. So now all we have to do, we've already sewn these two together. We just have to sew the four patch together. And this is what I mean by the seams will automatically nest together. So hopefully you can see that. We've got one seam going one way and the bottom seam is going the opposite direction. And when you put those two together, they'll feel nice and flat. If they feel bumpy, then you don't have the seams aligned right. Um, if they're nice and flat, they will, the seams will be perfect every time. You can pin this if you feel more comfortable. On this small piece, I'm not going to. And it helps when the machine doesn't get unthreaded. Which it sometimes does. 
That's something I found with Brothers a lot. If you don't pull the thread down after you've cut it um, out far enough, it always unthreads. Now we're going to do the pinwheels and the pinwheels are the lavender and the dark one of the navy blues the largest square so if you put them one on top of another and draw a line from here to the here on the opposite corner we're going to sew a quarter of an inch seam on one side and a quarter of an inch seam on the other and again i'm going to chain piece this if you have the um quarter inch foot with the guide you're just going to put the guide right on the line um, So, when we sew, whoops, you're going to put a, the guide right on that line and you'll have a quarter inch seam from, from that line. And then what I'm going to do is just turn it around and again, so a quarter, put the guide on this line and sew a quarter of an inch seam. I'm going to chain piece these, um, so I'm not going to cut the thread. When I get to the end of the second one, I'm going to pull it out and turn them around and go right in when ready for the second pass. do is pull it out a little bit and I'm going to turn it around making sure my threads are under the foot that way you don't get all knotted and just keep on going do you have to do it this way no but I like to do it this way I found it's just faster now They're connected. I hope you can see that. So all I have to do is cut these two threads and we're ready to go. Now, all you have to do is cut right on the line that you just drew and you'll end up with two half square triangles. Can, you can use a rotary cutter, but for me, it's just as easy to, easy to cut them with a scissor. It doesn't have to be super, super straight. It's just part of your seam. So, with these, again, we're going to put, see, there's your half square triangle. We're going to keep, set the seam and iron them with the blue, dark blue on the top. That'll put the seam allowance automatically on the dark side. And some of this is, I mean, if you've watched the other videos, a lot of it's just repeat. But eventually, if you've never done any of this stuff before, by doing it over and over again, you'll get it. It's not rocket science.
Now, as I've told you before, I don't always cut off my dog ears. And for those of you who don't know what a dog ear is, um, the dog ear is this funny little corner and extra fabric here. A lot of the times on bigger pieces, um, I will keep the dog ear there because it does help me figure out where to sew and it just helps lock everything together. It's not really that much bulk um, in bigger pieces to be worried about. In this one, um, however, because there's so many small tiny pieces, I will be cutting the dog ears. And I'm just using the scissor. Here we go. Now, as you can see, all we have to do by changing the direction of the square of the half square triangles you're going to make a pinwheel again just like we did with the four patch i'm going to sew this one to this one this one to this one and then two sets together two rows together and because of how we originally ironed our seams these will nest together perfectly and just double check to make sure. cut them apart and iron our seams. Now if you put both of these going the exact oops, same way when you are um, ironing the seams and sending them they will go together perfectly as far as your seams. There you go. So all we have to do is iron this, um, sew this one to this one, and then sew the two blocks together. And because of how we ironed the seams, again, they're gonna go together perfectly. Both of the seams will be in the right directions.
there we go Now, all we have to do is sew this block to this block. And these seams, because of how we ironed them before, are going to nest perfectly. You've got one seam for the pinwheel going that way, and the four patches going this way. And just when you're sewing these because of the pinwheel make sure when you get to the to, to the seam for the pinwheel if you have to just lift your foot up a little bit so the seam stays nice and flat when you sew over it there we go Perfect. I always double check my seams just to make sure because I know it's going to be next. And I just want to make sure that the seams are going to nest nicely together. So now we can take the piece that we just made for C and attach it to A and B. I'm just fixing my seams a little bit so that they nest together perfectly. Again, I do pin these because there's a lot of little seams here and I want to make sure everything stays lined up. Pay, pay attention to your seams and it's not a race so if you have to slow down to go over some of these seams and make sure everything lays nice and flat now's the time to do that because if not you're going to be have a bulky mess on the back and it's a lot harder if and when we get to the quilting stage and I think um, if you guys want I'm going to do another set of videos after we're done with this and actually do some ruler work on this um, design. Mine is probably going to be a wall hanging for the classroom um, but I thought it would be fun. It's got a lot of potential for ruler work and quilting. There we go. Let me just iron it real quick. So um, let me know what you think. I think um, I'll do some free ruler work classes, um, videos online for those of you who have rulers. Um, 
I'm probably going to use um, a lot of the sample set and maybe a few of the other ones that I've gotten in uh, recently. But I think that's what I'm going to do after this video set is over, after this quilt along. So I think I'm going to run through some of the rulers that I have. Hopefully, if you guys like that idea, um, let me know. If there's something else you want to learn, let me know that too. There you go. So I hope you're enjoying this. Um, and again, I really think this is gonna, this stitch happens is gonna lend itself really, really well to some ruler work um, and do some custom quilting of our own. If that's something that you think you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. If there's something else that you wanna learn, um, let me know that too and we'll go from there. Um, if you don't have any questions, and unfortunately I can't see any comments, so I think that'll be it for today. Um, I'm here again Tuesday as normal, so I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend, and I hope you have a great week to come. Memorial Day will be coming soon, so watch out. We might have a sale. So great time to get the rulers. If you haven't gotten them yet, that'll be it. All right, everybody, have a great day, and I'll see you later. Bye.